it was that kind of, uh, I guess, polarity. Yes. Which you got me thinking about because you used that word on Sunday when you were talking about yes. um, uh, tradition and cultural relevance. That's right. Yeah. And I've worked in the area with um, organisational development where we looked at um, congregations and some, some of the polarities that were affecting them. And tradition and innovation was one of them. But, yes. And there are a few, you know, yes. depending on where you are. Yeah. And, I mean, the theory of that is that it's not either or. It's, it's both it's and. It's both and. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so it was really interesting, and I, I'm, I'm just wondering, have, have you um, experienced? I mean, obviously you said it because it's real, but you've experienced that tension between uh, tradition and relevance, social cultural re relevance. Well, I, I would go so far as to say the tension between tradition and cultural relevance would be ubiquitous in just about every single. Mm a faith-based organisation. Mm. I, I value it. I see it as, I, I see it as, I just imagine a, an elastic and cultural relevance in one part of the elastic and tradition in the other part of elastic. And as long as we sort of keep it in a dance, I think everybody yeah. wins. Um, as soon as we stretch too far, in either direction, I, I think we move into the negative territory of both. And I think that's what Jesus was challenging. Uh, the Pharisees were going too far yeah. um, into their yeah. tradition to the point that they were dehumanizing de yeah. uh, human, human beings. I don't think Jesus pulls into the cultural relevance. I think the Pharisees might see him as pulling too far. It's depending on what you're saying cultural relevance, yeah. but I, I, think, I think his fulcrum, the, the, the midpoint, is, is, the, is love of people, is the infinite dignity mm. and honour due to people. Yeah. So the point at which tradition pulls away from the, the infinite dignity of being human, yeah. that's, that's, I think, where the the argument comes in, and that's a yeah. weakness of the traditional movement. See, I've asked myself, because I'm a big believer in this theory, and it's interesting that you were drawing a figure eight, yes. because um, this theory says there's an upside to both both ends of the yes. polarity, you know, but, but if you stay on one side, you go into the downside. Yes. And the only way to get out of that is not to try to do better at what you're doing, but it's actually to see the value and work towards the upside of the opposite. So. I mean, the downside of tradition is it can become stodgy and, and stifling and dead and nothing ever happens. And there's a downside to cultural relevance too, that you're always trying to think, what's the next thing we've got to do? What, you know, how, how, you know, um, and, and losing track of where you come from and why you're doing it. Yeah, losing identity. Losing identity. So it, it is that energetic figure eight. But I've asked myself, okay, when is it not... A, a polarity. Are there points where you actually have to take a side? Um, and I think it's when people are harmed. Yeah, so I'm a bit anxious about the word take a side because I, I literally see it as a dance. Mm. So, uh, you know, one partner of the dance is tradition, another partner of the dance is the cultural relevance. And, you know, who's winning, who's losing? Well, if you're dancing, no one's winning, no one's losing. It's, yeah. you know, sometimes we need to move, you know, in this direction and in other times we need to move in that direction. And what threatens the dance is obviously the, the separation, moving uh, too yeah. far in, in we'll, one we'll, direction. We'll get on to Jesus and the Pharisees again in a second, yeah. but, <laughs> which is one of the things, which was actually mm. the eye-opening thing for mm. me yesterday. Um, but I guess... Uh, in, in the theory of that polarity is an organisation, not everything is polarity. Some things are problem and require problem yes. solving strategies. That's right. Um, and polarities are recurring things which are actually interdependent. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I, for me, there are some things which 
So it's discernment. Is this a polarity? Is this a polarity? Or is this that we can an injustice? Manage, we yeah. can work on together. We, we can value from. Um, or is it actually a, a real problem that we have to overcome? Mm. Yeah. So, so that the Pharisees. I, I, I've reckoned for years that the Pharisees get a, a, a bad, have got a bad image, um, and I've been grateful to for a, to a couple of scholars who you did refer to who suggest that maybe Jesus was trained as a yes. Pharisee. And I don't. I mean, that's we can't say. He certainly was familiar with how they mm. operated. He was referred to as teacher, um, and um, but I think and scholars suggest that you know what we Christians often see is a conflict between Jesus and the uh, the Pharisees. And uh, Amy Jill Levine points this out: isn't conflict? It's just what Pharisees did with each other. It's what um, rabbis did. They, it's dialogue, conversation it's dialogue. With, within a college of Pharisees. Yeah. And it's energetic and it's mm. <laughs> really vigorous. My Jewish friends will talk about the law as beautiful and life-giving. At that stage in their history anyway, they had descended into that, that downside of, of um, legalism. And um, Jesus talked about straining gnats, mm. you know, which is a beautiful image. Um, I think I mentioned the, the image in Matthew 23 of um, that Jesus criticising them for, for tithing their herbs and spices mm. and ignoring the better things of the, uh, like in, in Amos, of justice and mercy and, and compassion. Um, so I think mm. it's interesting. I, I see him standing in that tension between yes. those two. Um, yeah. I have compassion. I have compassion on the Pharisees too, because the, the, the raw encounter with the divine and what that demands of us mm. is exceedingly awesome. Yeah. And sometimes religion is easier if you can focus on the measurable. Yeah. Uh, you know, I ticked off 612 of the 613 <laughs> Rules, I had a good day. How many thing. rules did Kitty Flanagan have in her book? Well, she wasn't close enough to the, the Mishnah. She right. only had 488. <laughs> uh, the Mishnah, I think, had 613. So that was, that was one of the points I was making, was that Jesus doesn't hold too tightly to tradition or scripture. Well, well I have there was a book. 613, he says, there's just two. Love God, love your neighbour. Yeah, I have... Well, Love your enemy too, which he mm. throws in, which is interesting because that's how he, um, he's not just a traditionalist, he interprets the tradition in terms of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's a dangerous place to be the one in the middle. Yes. You know, um, yeah. where, you, where Jesus is obviously experiencing, he's, he's been relevant to the people, he's got all that following, but the moment he starts talking about Jerusalem and the cost of discipleship, they don't want a part of it. They want that. They want the relevance without the, um, I guess, without the the discipleship. Um, and I think you end up with both sides of, or both extremes of the the uh, polarity kind of um, against him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's a, a difficult place to be. Yeah, it it is a difficult yeah. difficult place to be. I think if you, I think if you're going to make some comments or put under the microscope um, any of our cultural or spiritual traditions, mm. I think you do draw a mark on yourself that people will take aim at. And I think part of it is just the nature of asking questions about it. Be, then the the nature of tradition, whether it's cultural or spiritual, is this is the way we've always done it. Mm. And people sleepwalk through it and they don't yeah. ask questions about it. They don't, they've never really been asked to think about it. But if someone puts up their hand and says, oh, you know, could we talk about this? It does create that discomfort and, and you will, you will, um, and I, it's look, just I, the discomfort yeah. of being asked a question. I mean, I'm thinking in terms of congregations, but it's in terms of communities as well. Um, and, and I've seen some of these 
tensions kind of below the surface. Yeah, like the Anzac yeah. tradition, which I spoke about, that's, yeah. that's already drawn some, shall we say, or he Australia, yeah. heavy, heavy comment. So, so, so it's interesting for me because I, I've drawn some comment, I've drawn some feedback about that, but I never actually said anything. I know. About the Anzac traditions, I said nothing. All I said was, if someone were to ask questions about it, yeah, there's a strong possibility they would be cold sh shouldered. Well, even suggesting that you could ask questions about it has drawn has drawn it, yeah, which is quite interesting. So, uh, um, I, I would just be wondering what's what the story is beneath the the uneasiness that someone is forecasting, not a question, but the possibility Even that a question could be asked. Yeah. It's already drawn energy, which yeah. I'm finding interesting. So why is it a no-go area that we don't even think to think about it? We've, well, we've made it a sacred identity thing in, yes. in, in our country. Yes. Anyway. So, so I, I was wondering what you, you thought about my comments in and around scripture, because I think what, what this is the feeling I, I have is that when I read Jesus through the scripture, the first thing I notice is that he's deeply formed by his scriptural tradition. Yeah. His critique of tradition actually comes from being formed in that scripture tradition. But I notice that he has a very loose hold on it. He doesn't take it that seriously. There's parts where he just leaves things out, like in Luke chapter 4. Yeah. He quotes Isaiah, the scroll, but then conveniently leaves out the parts he disagrees with, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, there's other parts that he rewrites, you know, like in the Beatitudes, you have heard it said, love your neighbor, but hate your enemy. He, re, he reconfigures that and says, but I say to you, yeah. love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. So here he's rewriting scripture completely um, so my feeling about some aspects of christianity in australia is too tight a hold on scripture and the authority of scripture right and uh, and in this uh sure. dance between tradition and cultural relevance i'm inviting us to not hold our scripture and the authority of scripture as tightly as we just accept that we are, to just have a looser feel on it. I, I think if you wonder, stretch it too far, you actually, that's where fundamentalism Yes, is. And, and that's what I see happening yep. in our, our Australia. The, yep. the points at which division occurs within the churches is... is fundamentalism, fundamentalism on both on sides. Both, both sides. So when we say that he, he was critically, he thought critically about the tradition, it's about the traditions. Yes. There was no one tradition coming yeah. through, um, just as there isn't for us. No, our, our tradition is created. Uh, you know, yeah. it, it took about 400 years for us to agree on the 27 books of the, mm. of the New Testament, uh, yeah. you know, just as, as one example. And what I see in Jesus that is a priori is this experience of God. And I, I think that's what's a priori even to the scriptures. But the scriptures are a, a codified explanation yeah. uh, of the experience, but it's the experience that comes first and the codification follows on later. So there are many polarities, including yeah. one would be um, inner experience and inner certainty and inner reality and outer reality, like what we receive from the tradition, but also the reality we experience within ourselves, which parts of the Old Testament talked about, mm. uh, and Jesus himself referred to, and that Mark read from yesterday about what comes from within mm. is what either makes one pure or impure. Um, you know, the kingdom of heaven is within. The within, yes. Well. So, uh, yeah, the, the, there are strands in the Old Testament that, that say that, and he chose that. Um, that's what he, he emphasised. Um, 
Uh, and then when he quoted, but when he talked about the reference to Naaman, um, but, um, the foreigner, yeah, they tried to throw him off the cliff, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a warning bell. If you if you yeah. challenge the traditions, people might throw you off a cliff. Yeah. Okay. So look, in... I sh we should move to Ballina then. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are no cliffs. No, yeah. no. <laughs> and I, I think to me, a healthy congregation includes the capacity for us to look at mm. our own preferences and those of others in that mm. critical way. Yes. So you, even if you apply what you've just said to me to the scriptures, uh, there's a lot mm. of positive that I see in the, the approach the Pharisees take. Yeah. And the one positive that I see is, if my understanding is correct, they took the purity rules that mm. applied only to the priest and said, look, folks, there's no reason why we, why we all can't mm. live as priests. Mm. We are all priests in the eyes of God. So therefore, which we'll is a follow good reformation. These yeah. yeah, we'll follow the ablution of yeah. washing hands yeah. because, and that's, that's a nascent priesthood of all mm. believers. Now there's something positive yeah. in applying that tradition to, to all Jews, mm. not just a specific class of Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder if we look at, you know, a, a more progressive liberal view of scripture or a more fundamentalist view. I mean, there's a lot of space in between. It's not just two mm. polarities in this. And uh, when, I, when we think about the Jews uh, as John, I mean, jo John's gospel refers to the Jews. I mean, it's almost anti-Semitic. Yes, it is very anti-Semitic. But, but then we realize that John and Matthew were written at a time when there was a lot of conflict between mm. the new emerging church and the Judaism of the day. Mm. Yeah, yeah. E even Paul is quite anti-Semitic. Huh? Yeah. I, I, I worry that our scriptural tradition has, is the, uh, the, the seed of racism with, within a Christian consciousness, yeah. you know, starting with Paul and, and John, as soon as you see a group has other. I think it's been used in that way over mm. the centuries. I, I don't, yeah. Um, I'd have to think about that, whether I feel, think Paul was, was himself and somebody else. Um, he's, I was in my, when I was- Oh, it's just, the, it's just the divide between, you know, the Gentiles and yeah, the Jews, yeah, you know, just that, yeah. that, that first um, synod. And, yeah. and he, I mean, Paul basically, mm completely reinterpreted mm. the Old Testament. Um, a friend of mine in college um, suggested, in looking at Paul, said, well, doesn't this give us permission to change the Bible as we like too? The, 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 the lecturer was not impressed. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, okay, so where do we go with this? I mean, how, uh, how, how do we encourage that kind of conversation within the congregation at least because um, I mean I think we've all had um, either had or seen conversations online mm. uh, and just in the news about the mm. pandemic and about yes yes <laughs> about uh, masks and vaccinations mm. and supposed cures and things and um, one side won't listen to the other and what the other mm. side may not yes and it's, it becomes a very the, the very polarities seem to be pulling too far in our, yeah. in our current age and it's, it's a case of I, I think we need each other each pole needs the other and you, you can only be fully human in conversation with with the other I, my background training was immensely immensely traditional mm. high Anglo-Catholic tradition. And that was really beautiful for me. It, the ceremony pulled me towards the divine, um, mm. I felt. Yeah. But the demands, of my, the demands of being a pastor in this time and place pulls me more, more towards cultural relevance. Yeah. And I rely on 
the traditions to make sure I don't spin off into orbit, yeah, you know? Yeah. So there's always those moments where, uh, let's do a Muslim call to prayer in the Eucharist. And you think, no, wait a minute, that's going too far. <laughs> you know, that's well, stepping too far out of our tradition. Just, just come back. Uh, we, we just need each other in that dance. Um, you know, I, I, that, that's, how I, so that's how I think we need, we, we need the dance partners. I, the, yeah. the, the, really, I, I, I worry that we, we, we too, you know, we, we, I worry that there's not enough diversity. Um, I, I think the more diversity there is, managed well, uh, that's a source of great vibrancy. Mm. Uh, we we oh. try to encourage diversity here, but when someone comes with, the, with that difference, the saying, my greatest difference from you is my greatest gift to you, mm. that the diversity that people bring is incredibly enriching. And we're all, always the poorer without that diversity. So that's why I love the sign up here. Yeah. You know, come as you. I yeah. mean, there's that hymn, come as you are. Yeah, come that as you actually, are. So, and then we'll change you to look just like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that you're a dirty, sniveling sinner, you know. And yeah. come, that's okay, you can come. No, this is actually come as you, come as who you are. Yeah. Bring your identity with you and, f and form this new, be a part of this community. Um, I think there's a lot more value in, in that approach. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh. So what's our conclusion? The, the polarities are a gift. Yeah, look, I think they are, um, and but it, it requires constant, you know, thought, uh, listening, and, and listening. Um, one of the things in organisational theory is that you look at what are the warning signs. Yeah, what are the warning signs that, that will take us down to the mm -hmm, that. the negative? But they also look at what are the the positive things for each mm -hmm. for each of the polar polarities, and, and one of the things that you find is often the positive thing, things that will help build a strong sense of, a healthy sense of tradition, will equally build a healthy sense of being able to relate relevantly to the culture. Mm. So the positives can be actually mutually mm. inclusive, um, but it's also good to be aware of uh, mm. what are the things that will drag us down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so that figure eight is, you know, uh, an energy cycle, and you know, yeah. we stay out of the, um, yeah. the downside as much as possible. Yeah. So, so it's actually just pole dancing. It's pole dancing. Yes. Yes. We need pole dancing, dancing. or dancing. <laughs> yeah. Dancing. Pole dancing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. That's probably a good. Yeah, good so place Chris, to. Chris and Desiree finish up pole dancing. Pole dancing. Yeah. The conclusion is pole dancing. <laughs>